Okay, it's June 23rd. It's 4 a.m. And I want to show you the real orbs that make up the Moon Hologram Orb Cluster Nucleus Parent Orb Cluster. Okay, you see the edge of the Moon Hologram? With that electromagnetic field holding the star's energy in because our moon is a star. See it holding the energy in. Okay, the electromagnetic field in green. Okay, now watch what the ores are doing. On the outside and how they uh, penetrate into that permeable membrane which is made up of fast moving orbs and it takes just the right approach, the right angle and an orb that needs a recharge in order to be permitted to enter and that's the way the whole thing works I dropped in my cigarettes and I'm going to pick them up. So, I'm going to set this up. Let you watch that for a minute. Let's see how it looks like. One by one, that is. I'm going to put them back in the box. Now I need one. I do that. Okay, I got two cameras to make. I'm going to take different photos and uh, video. Mostly video. Okay, that's the moon all oh, moving. I haven't touched the camera yet. Okay. But look at all those orbs. Okay, I wanted to show you what they look like and how big they are. And that membrane there. Okay, the orbs are moving so fast at the speed of light, you can't even see them. And inside that nucleus, they're moving even faster. Since they're already pure energy organisms, they are light. So, whenever they move, you know, they can move faster than light. I mean, the speed of light. So, that's usually their starting point. The ones on the outside here tonight, near the moon hologram in that orb cluster, that's the parent orb cluster of the moon hologram. They're moving slower, okay, because that's the general. Uh, call it uh, that's the general uh, not just the velocity but uh, um, yeah, it's, like, it's the general vibrational vibrations frequencies for the uh, entire com complex of the nucleus and the parent orb cluster regarding how it's going to operate tonight. So it's been preset for tonight and this is, you know, the way the ores will move for now. Okay, now that can be changed at any time. Wow, it doesn't want to show itself. 
Okay. So you see how they're trying to go in? <laughs> the thing would stand still. Okay. See? The entire whole ran. The whole ran is surrounded by orbs on all sides. And you see how they all want to come in and get the energy? But they're not allowed in much. Only certain ones pass through, and once they pass through, you can't see them, because immediately they turn into energy, because that's pure energy in the, in the nucleus. Okay, so no matter how slow they're going outside, as soon as they come inside, they gotta move fast, because they have to earn their keep, and, and in order to get charged up, they gotta become part of the nucleus, and uh, you know, revolve around the center of the nucleus uh, as fast as they can until they reach enough velocity to charge up and then even more velocity to escape back through that membrane because that membrane acts two ways. It lets orbs in and then it lets orbs out. To come in, you, get, you have to be depleted no energy, okay, or hardly any energy. To come out, you have to have enough velocity to penetrate the membrane to get out, okay, because the uh, velocity and the momentum, okay, the momentum of uh, the uh, orbital revolutions around the center of the nucleus, okay? The, when it's high enough, the, when the velocity is high enough, that's the only time an orb can get out, or an orb cluster can get out, because all th these are not just orbs, every orb is a cluster, okay? No matter how big or how small it is, it's a cluster. Okay, it could be minuscule subatomic, smaller than subatomic particle. It could be smaller than a quark, but it doesn't matter. It's still a cluster. Okay, these things can go infinitesimally small and still be clusters, or they could be larger than stars. Okay, the whole universe could be a cluster. Okay, and more than one universe can be a cluster because everything is interconnected and everything is alive. That's the main thing. All these things are, I shouldn't say things, all these entities, beings, orbs, energy, organisms, whatever name you want to give them, okay, that doesn't change the fact but they're all alive. Okay, this is the other side. So, there's a lot of life out there. I don't know why we're always looking for life in space. It's all over the place. Actually, these things are just like that here on Earth. But they're just not in our dimension and we don't see them. And they move too fast, even if they are in our dimension, for us to see them. We see them sporadically here and there, or when they stop and look things over, like a nuclear facility, I mean a nuclear weapons facility or something like that, that interests them. Uh, or anything else that interests them, but otherwise, we can't see them. They move too fast, especially if they're moving at the speed of light, they're faster. Uh, and they're absolutely invisible then. Uh, and also, they uh, are multi dimensional and they can, uh, you know, go from dimension to dimension out of our dimension. And 
be somewhere else in another dimension and we don't see them, okay? Because their energy, you know, it's pretty hard to see energy unless it's like this light. And uh, this is not a sunlight reflection, okay? It's, I repeat, this is not a sunlight reflection. This is the nucleus of the moon hologram, okay? And that's why I call it the moon hologram or cluster nucleus, okay? It's a star. Do you see how bright it is? Okay? It's not a sunlight reflection. I don't care what you've been taught, what you've been told, and who told you, okay? Because all that is wrong, okay? It, it's no such thing as a sunlight reflection on the moon, quote, moon, our moon, okay? This is a living entity a cluster of living organisms which are energy organisms that produce in a cluster even more energy than they do individually. Therefore, we have such high intensity, pure energy production. And look at them all. Very busy little living organisms that are hundreds of kilometers each. They're not so little. Okay, they only look little on my little screen. That's one inch by two inches. But in actuality, they're hundreds of kilometers each. Amongst them are smaller ones, even down to infinitesimally small ones. But they're all still clusters, and they're all still orbs, or whatever else you would like to call them. But the fact remains that this is not a sunlight reflection, that this is a membrane, which is an electromagnetic field. It's created by fast-moving orbs, which are moving at the speed of light, and that's why you just see a green line and nothing else. They're moving so fast you can't see them. Okay, you only see the light. But the reason it's green is because it's showing that this uh, line is radioactive, okay? It's not only an electromagnetic field, it's a radioactive electromagnetic field, just like on any other star. Because a star, whether it's our moon or any other star, operates on the same principles. And all the principles they operate on are, you know, pretty much the same with slight differences in vibrational vibrations frequencies, orb velocities, and uh, maybe color, or, uh, and size, obviously. Some stars are larger than others, okay? Some stars are stronger or more powerful and have more energy than others, okay? It all depends on their frequency, uh, vibrations frequency, and or velocity levels, whether they're high or low, okay, or in between. So, this is your moon, okay? This is it. Now, if this was a solid object that is reflecting the sun, sun's rays, 
it would never give off a glow like that. Okay. Okay, you see that glow all around it? It would never do that. No object. Okay. Did you see? Did you see that shift? Watch, I'll go back farther. All the way. See that little X part to see? I'm back all the way. Even back all the way, you can see that X. Okay? See the glow all around it? <laughs> Just that blue orb got his back. And now, now he's going to start making it bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Not again. But that's why it was jumping before. You never get close to the thing and you know, get a good video or anything because uh, it jumps around like crazy because that thing just uh, is too much. Uh, that little orb there, uh, the, the blue one, because it, it, it's, it's a, a, what do you call it, a wormhole. And wormholes have a lot of energy. Wow, it's showing up and I didn't even set it up at the right uh, angle or the right uh, range or I'm talking about the correct angle or the correct range. I haven't even done anything. And it's showing up already. It, uh, it must be very powerful tonight. I wonder if I'll uh, get to see more things flying out of it. Because what it's doing is uh, delivering <laughs> beings and uh, you know ships and supplies and who knows what else into this area of space <laughs> or the universe, the, uh, the visible three-dimensional universe, and it could be coming from uh, you know. It could be coming from uh, another galaxy, not our own. Uh, or it could be coming from the nearest stars, you know, whatever is the closest constellation, one of the stars, uh, or one of the planets that can uh, pump out enough energy to, to create a world. Very advanced race, obviously, uh, on the, or species, because uh, stars are uh, made up of. Uh, well, it's smooth. Stars are made up of uh, orbs that are insects or insectoid at the moment, and so is our moon. That blue thing, yeah. Uh, huh? Something's there. Let me fix that screen. Something was there that they didn't want me to see.
That's definitely a wasp. I'm sure it
I still have it or blisters. No matter which way you look at it. Everything there is made out of layers and layers of worms. It's pretty uh pretty amazing. See all those white orbs there? And that big one? See some sort of pipe right there. And look at those things that look like they're going straight up in the air. Right there. Is there a few of them? That's that. It's a region that's halfway in and halfway out. You see it? Right there. Right there. Oh, wow, you got it right. So moving out of the way. A region. Okay, see the hole inside the middle there? A lot of things come out of that hole. Can you see the hole right in the middle of it? I have to get the angle just right. Okay, there's a hole. And a lot of things come out of there. And that's a hexahedron. It's very halfway into the structure or the layers. Can you see how sensitive it is? Can I show that? That's what they come out of. Like a lot of orange shit right out of there. Especially the big ones. are very large. All of these are very large. Right there. See the sizes of them? And that's another sensitive area. Right there. See that thing that looks like a cross? Right there in the middle. I didn't say it is a cross, I just says it looks like one. Okay. I don't want to mix things up. And you see the hexahedron with the hole right in the middle? That goes deep inside that hole. So is the whole thing, but that hole, a lot of things come out of it. Look at these big orbs right there on top. Those bright ones there. There's something there he doesn't want to see. I can't tell where it is. Oh, 
that's a break, but you see those three orbs right there? Watch how bright they are. And you get them at the right angle. See, that's the kind of things that go off to light those energy sources. And here's my last thing far away. Pretty unique. If you know that the whole structure is made out of living organism, organisms, layers and layers and layers of them. So many layers. I guess that's what it takes to make a star. All those layers are made by them. See, see that blue tint? That's that blue orb, and it's right behind the moon hologram. Okay, that's what's causing that blue tint. see it's there but I wasn't able to get it tonight I'll have to do it again and I'm being besieged by pigeons god if it's not wasps or spiders it's pigeons I don't know what's worse do you see how blue everything is so that orb is there. When it's there, it turns everything blue. But it's learned its lesson the last time I filmed it, because I caught it shooting out other objects. And I know it's a wormhole. And it's so powerful, it's like a star. And look how it makes it's so bright and blue that it makes everything else blue all around the moon hologram and uh, if the moon hologram wasn't a star itself it would be blue okay but its energy sources give it too much brightness for it to turn the blue color but these other words that aren't as charged, you know, they, they look blue, no matter what color they are, because the blue is in the area and it just, <laughs> you know, covers them up. Look, the whole thing is blue. So, we know it's there, but it's not going to make itself visible this morning or last night or maybe never <laughs> these things are fast learners and they have long memories and they don't repeat their mistakes and uh, I was lucky to catch it you know ejecting objects the last time and, uh, I mean I, I tried thousands of times to do it and I finally got lucky you know and, and got one but uh, you know it's not an everyday kind of thing it happens once you know blue moon <laughs> okay well thanks for viewing and uh, yeah, have a blue blue moon too <laughs> yourselves because uh, uh, I'm pretty blue sitting out here for hours okay good morning enjoy your day thank you for viewing this is super mesh now stay here